Hey guys, we are in the basement at today. Yesterday, guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well, guys, we are doing a John's Arcade on the road. That's right, guys, we're getting out of the basement, and yes, we are taking a break from the Mortal Kombat 2. You know, this is almost done. Like, one more video, and we're gonna be playing Mortal Kombat 2. I cannot wait until I have this game in the row and we're playing it. But anyway, in this video here, we're going down to Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to the Southern Fried Game Room Expo show. Now, this is like the third time I've gone to this show. It's a great show. Actually, last year, uh, we did uh, the Skyskipper reveal with Alex and Whitney. If you guys missed that episode, go back and watch that because that was a terrific video. And actually, Nintendo is releasing Skyskipper on the Switch now. So if you want to learn the history of that game, be sure to go back and watch last year's Atlanta video. Anyway, in this video here, we're going to take an all-access tour of the place. We're going to check out every single arcade game, every single pinball machine, and there are a ton of them. We're going to check out the consoles, okay? We're going to look at the stuff for sale. It is an all-access tour. And then we're going to come back to the basement, do some viewer mail, and then I want to talk about this. Uh, this is the, that uh, FPGA Major Havoc and, and, and Tempest board, okay? A multi-vector board. We're gonna look at this when we come back. And I actually, I haven't even opened it yet. So anyway, enough of that. Let's just hop in the car, hop on a plane, go down to Atlanta, Georgia, and visit the Southern Fried Game Room Expo. Georgia at the Southern Fried Game Room Expo. I thought we'd go inside and check this out. We're gonna do like an all access tour. Let's go. So this is the main room. Lots of vids, lots of pins. Let's check it out. Here we are. So they got a lot of vendors here and actually I've had a lot of fun shopping for stuff. I bought like a little Cruisin' USA N64 cart. Lots of that stuff. I kind of wish they had more vendors. It's been kind of fun looking for stuff. But here's like the main room here. It is definitely loud in here. But let's kind of check out the vids. This one right here, the first one is actually pretty cool. It's a Nichi Butsu Crazy Climber, but this is the cabaret version. It looks a lot like mine, but it has a 13 inch monitor and it's not as deep. And I believe that has the original joysticks on it, which I'm missing and the artwork on the control panel is great. This thing's super cool. Next is a Miss Pac-Man Cabaret, Trophy Hunting by Sammy, a Blitz 99. There's a, there's a big selection here, guys, of everything, by the way. You know, 90s, 80s, 70s. Police trainer. This next one here is Sammy. I don't... Demolish Fist? I don't know that. Do you, do you know that one, Mark? No, not at all. <laughs> and by the way, Mark's the cameraman, if you guys are wondering. He's here. Uh, Fire Brothers Wide Body. The two-player feature. I don't think my Marquis says that, does he? I don't see... Yeah, I don't recognize that. That's different, isn't it? Yeah, right? That's that's unique, isn't it? Yeah, uh, some, some some were made this way and some had the other way. There's some two, were made that way. Yeah, there's two different types of marquees. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that in person. That's yeah. kind of totally cool, actually. I like, yeah. I like it. You don't see... Maybe like one out of three you see. One out of three you see with that? One out of five, maybe. Huh. All right, Sega Choplifter in a, in a... It looks like a hyper sports cabinet. The, the yellow, you know? You ever play Sega Choplifter? I have, I have. On an Apple IIe. Yes, me too. 
there's like LEDs up there, and you can see people are selling the games. So this is a good place to come and buy games too. Like my friend Daniel sold two Mortal Kombat's today, but this is 350 or trade. You know, that's actually a good project with a working monitor to make your own hypersports or uh, track and field. It's got the Century coin door. If you really wanted to track and field, it's not that bad, especially because the monitor's working. Here's a Kickman that's having some monitor issues, kind of rolling. Cool black and white game, though. Actually, it's not black and white, it's color. This is MCR, it's an early MCR game. And like Pac-Man has a cameo in that. Like, where he'll come down. Let's see if we can play this, actually. Uh, it's having a sync issue. So you're supposed to pop the balloons. All right, maybe not. <laughs> Tapper, real nice. Here's a Tron, really nice. That looks like it's been restored. That's in good shape. I'd like to restore mine someday, honestly. I like, I like the game. Here's a Neo Geo 2 slot. Looks like it has uh, Samurai Showdown 2. Is that what that is? And then Metal Slug 3. Here's a Death Race that was working earlier, so it must have broken since then. Super rare game, guys. I mean, look at the artwork. It's just sick. This game caused a lot of controversy because you're running over people in cars, and they're supposed to be like undead zombies, and they scream when you run them over, but the cabinet is ridiculous. I don't know. I, I If I were to find one of these, I think I'd, I'd go for it. That's totally cool. Escape uh, from the planet uh, of the robot monsters. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of those the last few years. And it's kind of an isometric uh, shooter game. I think with some platforming elements. Last year at the show, Alex uh, from Nintendo Arcade, him and I played that for a while. Smash TV, I would totally get one of those. I want one of those, actually, badly. Or Total, total Carnage, like the sequel. Uh, the next cabin is kind of interesting. Uh, this is some kind of dynamo cab. And they made a dedicated wind jammers. I'm assuming there's a Neo Geo one slot in there, but I do. I, I like that. I, a lot of people love wind jammers, and someone made a marquee here. I, I think that's cool as hell. Next to it is a Cybercore Taito cabinet. I don't know what that is, and it's got an Arkanoid in there. Oh, that's probably the Taito uh, F2 hardware, whatever you know what I'm talking about with the cartridges. That's probably what that is. You swap out the marquee. Here's a Robotron. Is this a uh, Tokyo Drift Club or something? Yeah. What? What is that? Is it Tokyo something something? Initial D. What? Oh, Initial D. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I should have known that. <laughs> are you guys doing a web series right now or something? Yeah, we're doing a video. Are we on, are we on TV right now? Yeah, we're on TV, yes. <laughs> All right, here's a Hydro Thunder. Linked. This this right here is badass. This Tokyo Wars. I played this at uh, game uh, the place that we always meet at at Thanksgiving. Game what's GameWorks? GameWorks, yes. Yeah, I, I've played this game there, and it's it's super cool. You're driving these tanks. I don't know. I, I really like it. That game came out on the Wii too, I believe, or Wii U. I, I had it or did a demo of it. So here's a guy selling some mods, lighted pinball mods. Looks like, it looks like you can light up the area around the speakers and the uh, DMD. Actually, you know what? The game I played at GameWorks is not Tokyo Wars. It's Tank, Tank, Tank. That's the game I played. It's very similar to that though. That's the one I played and that's the one that was on the Wii or the Wii U. I like the vertical LCD. Speed up. I can't say I know that game. Do you? Bought it at an auction for $125. You bought that for $125? Bought that at an auction for $2,300. I love that. I got six of them. You got, what's your name? Brian. Brian, Brian I'm Brian. John. Hey, John. Good to meet you. Yeah, so Tokyo Wars, is that like a prequel to Tank Tank Tank? It is. Oh, yeah. So they're related, right? That won $50 out of a uh, storage auction. The Tokyo Wars? You paid $50 for that. 
That's crazy. <laughs> and 23 for the tank, tank, tank. Yeah, that's the sixth one I bought. Yeah, but that one was it's 23. It's cool. It is basically Mario Kart meets Tokyo Wars. Yeah, is that what it is? And it is so much fun. If you could find four links, you have four human friends right. playing it, you'll never get off. Is that right? <laughs> Now that that was that came out like on the Wii or Wii U, Wii U right? Yeah, yeah and the Wii. The U. only reason I bought a Wii U was for that. Is that right? Because I played a demo or something they had. Yeah. But you need to you need to sit down and play it before the show's over because even with two people, it's awesome. But don't mess around with this story mode crap. Just yeah. play against each Just other. Just play against. Yeah, I played this at GameWorks a long time ago. Yeah, I mean that that one I got from Sevierville from a. Uh, top jump but I got all of the ones that were in Disney Quest when they closed. Oh is that right? Yeah, they're, they're all in our star, our Stars and Strikes locations now. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh you have a, a location? We have uh, 13 locations. No all kidding. Metro Atlanta. We just moved into Augusta, Huntsville, uh, Nashville and somewhere in North Carolina we're building one too. So. Oh very cool. The large uh, starsandstrikes.com. Just go online. Go, very, Check it out. Alright thanks man. Good to meet you. Alright Jairus. We used to have one of those in the basement. Great game. Music is amazing in it. All right, let's keep going. So this is a Ferrari, like, three-screen driving simulator F355 challenge. That was here last year, and it's, it's sick. All right, the next cabin here, like, when I saw it, when I first came here yesterday, I, I stood here and, like, stared at this thing for, like, 10 minutes. I, it's beautiful. I, there's something about this that is really doing it for me. And the marquee, and by the way, this is a Nintendo versus a dual system upright. And they and they converted it, well, they didn't convert it, they put in the, the balloon fight board and then did some custom marquees. Now I remember like on Clove or something, a few years ago, people were trying to figure out the art for these marquees. Because Pete, there was like low resolution scans of it. And so someone, pieced it together, obviously, and did a terrific job. I mean, these marquees, that that artwork makes me very happy. It's, and this is a beautiful cabinet. I would totally get one of these. Like, I, I would like to get an upright versus unit system, a dual system. And Balloon Fight's perfect for it. Head to head, you're standing upright. And, and of course, this is the same as like the red tent I have in the basement, just the upright version. Hey, what's up? Dark, this is John, Dark Cat. John, I think you should show us your game, because you've been working on a game for a long time, and it's finally here, right? That's right, I've been working on Bucky O'Hare. You've been working on what? Bucky O'Hare. All right, can you show me it? Sure. All right, guys. John, I, I came here four years ago and met John, and he came up to me, and he wanted to tell me about Bucky O'Hare. It's his favorite game, and at the time, you didn't have a Bucky O'Hare. I just had a board. You had the board, no cabinet. And so for the last like three, four years, you've been piecing this together. Actually, I sent you this control panel. Yeah, you did, along with uh, Daniel Copeland. Yeah, Daniel helped me. Uh, I, I found that in a warehouse, and then we shipped it to you, Daniel and I. And that's the one that's on here. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a four-player. It was a four-player X-Men control panel. Yeah. And since the button layout was the same, I just patched some extra holes, and there you go. Right. And then tell me about the artwork. Like, where did it? Because but was Bucky O'Hare a dedicated cabinet? No, it was a kit, and uh, Connor and I just had a little square side art, and Rich did a full side art for it. Rich from this old game. Yeah. And the control panel overlay is also Rich's reproduction but it's from an NOS that I spent four years looking for. Right, and you found a new old stock one. So they sold this game as a kit to convert like Turtles and, and X-Men and stuff? Yeah, Turtles, X-Men and stuff. It's also an anthropomorphic kit because there's a jumper setting on the board where you can set it to two, three, or four players. Oh, is that right? So you can put it in a smaller cabinet. Right, and so you got the artwork reproduced by Rich. He, he kind of embellished a little bit, right? Because it wasn't full art like that. And then the kit did come with this exact overlay, right? Yeah, that was the exact factory overlay for that kit. And the and the marquee? And the marquee is the exact factory, what, what would have been on the factory. Now the side art, like I said, it is based on the original factory art. Right. But instead of just being a square, it's the full art. Right, right. I understand. So the piece that it came with originally was smaller and didn't cover the whole thing. Right. And now it's full. That's a full side art. That's very cool. And you like the gameplay? 
Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's uh, kind of my tried to do something different than Turtles with this. Yeah. It's kind of Turtles meets Sunset Riders a little bit. If you get too close to somebody, they'll start punching things. Um, if you hit all three buttons at once, you have a certain number of full screen bombs. You can blow up the whole screen for a second. Wow. <laughs> Very uh, cool. And uh, if you hit the bomb button on here, like X-Men, it's got three buttons. If you hit the bomb button, each player has unique grenades that are unique to them. Wow. And by the way, I noticed your high score uh, sticker up there. Yeah, basically <laughs> the only way to go for a high score on a beat-em-up is to do a one credit run. And how far did you get? Like, how long did it take you to get that score? Like, how long did you play? I've been playing for, like, weeks and sometimes... But, but the one credit, like, how long did that take? Well, I got to about the second boss. That was about five or, like, ten or fifteen minutes. Right. And I just couldn't beat the second boss. It, it owned me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, John. Well, thanks for sharing that, man. It looks... And by the way, they're, they're having, like, a best in show contest. I want you to win best in show. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But then again, we got this Ninja Baseball Batman over here. Yeah, there. yeah. So let's take a look at the Ninja Baseball. So that's for, by the way, thanks, John. That's for sale for two grand. And is that a dedicated game, by the way? Is that, a, someone yeah, made that up? Basically, Ninja Baseball Batman was an IRM game. It's, it's, it's gained some popularity since MAME came out. Right. And, uh, uh, and the anger video game nerd guy, um, I'm having a brain fart right now. Right, right. He did a video on it, and people have been talking about it. I've seen that video. Yeah, and did. so someone took a Konami cabinet and made like a kind of a, a, a fan-inspired version of it, right? Yeah. Um, I talked to the guy who owns it. His name's Davy. That art's based on the flyer for Ninja Okay. Baseball, they, they did a great job. So it's all based on the flyer, like a Konami cabinet. I like it. You did a good job. Like they said, it's a really rare board. You might you might find some Asian boards, but supposedly only 43 arcade units shipped to the United States. Oh, wow. Well, that's crazy. I mean, <laughs> there might be more Asian boards out there. I'm not sure how many Asian right, boards right. there are. Awesome. All right, John. Thanks, man. All right, let's keep going. All right, so the next game here is Crime Fighters. Another Konami beat em up. I believe that my turtles cabinet is of crime fighters. They must have had two different cabinets. I, I, I really don't know, to be honest. Because I think uh, on my turtles in the garage, and there's like some brick, you can see bricks and stuff under the paint. It's funny they have this like trivia whiz. It's kind of a interesting game to bring to a convention. <laughs> These are the kind of games that are like $50 on Craigslist and no one ever buys them. <laughs> that Rally X Cabaret I think is actually super cool. I like that game. I used to play that game. Actually, I used to play a lot of games like that, like on the or computers, remember? It was like a Radar Rat Race or something. Oh, yeah. Remember that? That was like on the uh, Timex Sinclair or something. Oh, my God. Remember that little Those thing? The Dark Ages. Yeah. Hey, here's Proc. No, you don't put me yeah, on Yeah, this film. is Brian no. Jones. Proc. <laughs> now, Brian, you brought the giant Donkey Kong. Yep. Can we talk about that? Please. Close. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's let's go check out Brian's giant Donkey Kong. All right. All right. So here it is. Brian, why did you do this? What's wrong with you? I I, I call it stupidity <laughs> myself. So, um, actually, the main reason we did it was because we wanted to uh, just bring attention to retro gaming and what what it's doing in communities today. So it was a not-for-profit thing we did, and it uh, really brought attention to Free Play Florida, what we do, and... and uh, That's right, because you, because yeah. at Free Play Florida in Orlando, you did a giant Star Wars too, right? right. Giant Star Wars, a 10-foot Tron, we're building a 10-foot Tempest, and a uh, Pac-Man. So we'll have the first 10-foot arcade that really actually is an arcade. That's hilarious. Now, I noticed the not MAME sticker, so you're writing original hardware, the PCB and power supply? Not in this case. Oh, you're uh, not? Billy, Billy sticker bombed me. Oh, that's right. That's what that, I, okay, I got it. Yeah. I know why that sticker exists. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it can run an original board. Yeah. I just have a, a DK JAMA adapter. Right. But for events like this, I put the 16 one in it. Oh, 16 one Just for reliability's sake. So let's take a look. I want to explain to me what you did here. Um, so what is the, like the monitor? The monitor's a 43 inch uh, LCD. 
so that's just a, a bad word, that's just a TV basically, yeah, right? TV. Yep. And then the joystick and the buttons. Where did you find those gigantic buttons? What are those? Those were hand modeled and 3D printed. Oh, really? Yep. There's a, a place called Factor. It's a makerspace in Orlando. They helped us do it. It's, it's an identical scaled up model of a real Donkey Kong button. Is that right? Yep. It's a true spring behind it. Is there a micro switch underneath and they designed it so it would all work? It's, it plays, looks, and feels just like a real Donkey Kong button, just big. Even the CPO, it's plastic, overlay, over the... Just, just oversized. Just oversized. And then this joystick? Same thing, it's a custom ball. So it's all kind of scaled up right. one and a half times from a real one. So, so is that what the scale is, 1.5? 1.5, yep. Right. It seems actually bigger than that. It, it's 50% it's larger, right? Is that how that works? Oh, it's 150%. 150%. Larger. Okay. Yeah. You can actually fit a real Donkey Kong inside this thing. Oh, that'd be that's funny. It's, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, all the artwork and everything that was all donated to us by this whole game, and it's all actually literally to scale. All he did was up the dimensions. That's to, it. And that's it. And it all fit right on the machine. Wow. And the metal bits we recreated them to be just very close. Oh, to that's it. all real metal up there. Yeah, it's all real metal. The bezel comes out. The, I mean, just like just like a real machine. <laughs> I, you know what, it's pretty cool. And then you use laminate, and obviously they don't have sheets large enough. Right, yes. You gotta so line we, them up. So we, yeah, we had to see and see parts out and laminate it and put the side art on. And, so uh, is, are the sides like one continuous piece of wood underneath there? It's, it's three. Oh, it is. It's actually only a half an inch thick. But oh. in the areas you can see, there's another piece. So it gives it that look of scaled up to one inch wide, which, yeah. which a Donkey Kong cabinet, when you do that, that's the scale you get. Right, right. So, and then one inch T molding to even the whole. Oh whole yeah. Pattern. You did a really good job. I mean, did you like per like do this all by yourself in the garage kind of thing? No, it took some help okay. from uh, <laughs> from uh, our, our whole team. Kind of jumped in and everybody did something. And we blew our speaker along the way. Oh, you did. Hit a, hit a pothole on one of the highways, oh, no. and then boop had had to go run to Walmart and get a speaker real quick. And, <laughs> Otherwise, a bit of pretty quiet Donkey Kong. Well, awesome. And, of course, you know, if you guys want to learn about Free Play uh, Florida, what's your website? It's uh, freeplayflorida.com. There you go. And when's the next event? It's November, right? November. November 8th. you got to move that so I can come to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's two weeks before Thanksgiving this year. But, yeah, we do it every year around the same time. This year, we've got about 30,000 feet of, oh, wow. of stuff. Uh, Keith Apicary, Nathan Barnett's coming, the Angry Video Game Nerd. Um, we got one big announcement, Tron related, that's not out there yet. But oh, really? Coming. Jeff yeah. Bridges is coming? Close. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, how, you, uh, free player uh, Orlando, how does it compare to this, like, size wise and number of games? Is it similar, more or less? I think we are mighty similar. Oh, really? In terms of games. Scale, yeah. Yeah. We, we do, last year we hit about 265 machines okay not counting the like pinball tournaments and all that stuff um so i'd say i mean on scale we're pretty darn close we don't do the uh the board gaming that's the component oh, yeah. okay. that are, that we don't have right but uh yeah it's, awesome it's and by the way i brian proc here has a website called gamestencils.com when we did the crazy climber restore the little owl the nichibusu owl yep. came from I you remember that yes. stick <laughs> little sticker yeah yeah so thanks <laughs> All right, Brian. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. See you around, man. Yep. See ya. All right, let's go over here. The next game here is called Zoar. I don't honestly know the history of it. I do know that Preston, from, uh, no cash value, from uh, Game Room Junkies, who also runs this event, he had a new old stock kit for this game that is super rare. And so he had a guy whose name escapes me right now put the kit in this cabinet. This cabinet is actually originally a centipede. And maybe we could find him and he could tell us, but the kit was made to go into a midway cabinet, like a Pac-Man or something. And so they kind of retrofitted it to fit the, the centipede. And I think they did a really good job. This is new old stock side art. And, and he told me that it didn't stick. And so they had to use like Super 77 to get it to adhere to the centipede. They put laminate on here. It's a really hard game. It reminds me a little bit of River Raid on the 2600, the gameplay. And what's cool is that the plane kind of goes up and down. So there's kind of some dimension dimensionality to it. Like right now, the plane's high up. 
And if she were to press the joystick down, it'll go down low and you can shoot the boats. So it's pretty cool. All right, next to it is the Deluxe Space Invaders. You know, we've seen that a million times. Uh, next to that is Standard of Magic. That's a pinball I used to own. It seems like a pinball that I'm hearing more and more about lately. Like, it's getting more and more respect to Papadou stuff. I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of one-dimensional and boring. But uh, next to it is Ali Stern. And the Stern that made this is Gary Stern's father's company. Different than uh, the Stern that we know today, but same family. And if you remember, we went to uh, Scoots' house. He had one of those in his basement. Next to it is Pinbot, another classic game. Really great Python Angelou artwork on the back. Next one here is Boxer. I've been watching people play this all day. You basically just hit that punching bag as hard as you can, and then it tells you, you know, how good you did depending on how hard you hit it. So she, let's see what she got. She got 400. <laughs> All right, the next game here is super cool. This is a, a, a pinball machine called Safe Cracker, and it's small. It's very, very tiny. <laughs> and I remember hearing an interview with Pat Lawler, who designed it, and they were kind of going after some gambling segment uh, with this game, which is why it's small. And it also has a really small pinball that comes out at times. I, I, I don't remember, I haven't played it in a long time. But it's really rare, and it, you also, you also do not see them with the little doors that are left and right in the back box. A lot of times that's missing. And then they also put a color DMD in here, which obviously was not original. It would have had a monotone uh, one. Let's try it out, actually. But it's like everything's just kind of compacted. Small flippers. I am candy. I honestly don't know the object of it. Oh, look at this, there's a little tag on here. It says engineering sample, so I don't know the story of this. Really neat game though. Oh, I remember, I think this game dispensed balls. Small BBs. We're working against the clock here. going on in the back too, like a, almost like a board game. The guards are nothing. Enter ball to win a magic token. Hey, look up and play the board game. Yeah, look up and play the board game. Use flippers to choose reward. Don't give up. ATM awards. Huh. Cyber dog, shoot any entrance. I don't know. It's cool. I don't know what I'm doing though. <laughs> so, all right. Pac-Man's arcade party. Now I don't. I'm not sure what's going on here. There, it has Xevious on there. But that, yeah, and that's some kind of a. No, that actually has a real coin door. Some of those have like the coin door sticker from from this uh, era of Namco games. I think they would sell those at Costco and stuff, but it's got an LCD. Uh, next one is Buster Brothers, which looks like it's some, some kind of a Williams cabinet. That's actually a pretty cool game. Shoot the balloons, there's co-op and stuff. They have that at Fun Spot. Time Soldiers and a Millipede cabinet. That's kind of like an Akari Warriors type game with the rotating joystick that you use to aim. And those joysticks are impossible to find if they go bad. So they have some uh, candy cab type cabinets over here. I'm not really sure if those are... Yeah, I don't know what those are, to be honest. <laughs> some LCDs and a big kind of blank area on top. Here's uh, Juvie. We saw this at Arcade Club in UK. A rhythm game. Uh, DDR. And then here's some more of those kind of candy cab cabinets. They're playing that Soul Calibur. Uh, that, that's, Assassin, that's Assassin's Creed guy. Uh, DDR. Uh, so it's cool. There's like actually an LCD on the top there that you can have artwork change on. It's kind of a cool cabinet. All right, here's some DDR action going on. Popping music. So obviously this is kind of the Japanese cab area. 
rhythm games, some Sega Blast City cabinets. I still would like to get a candy cab. I, I've never really seen them for sale though. There's a Namco on the Tekken. Here's Mortal Kombat. This is uh, my friend Daniels. He actually sold it. He had $800 on it. I don't know what he got for it. But it, it's all original site art and stuff. Here's a Turtles in Time. That, that looks pretty good. Looks like an original artwork on the sides. That looks actually great. NBA Jam, Stingray. There's like the original Data East Star Trek game. What's up, guys? <laughs> it's a Data East Star Trek. And then there was like a Bally one before that, like in the 70s. So that would have been one that came out, I guess, in the, maybe the late 80s. And then Stern Meteor. So down here, you can see they have a ton of pinball. And it's, it's all kinds of stuff, too. It's EM, Solid State, a lot of oddball stuff. We'll go down. Actually, why don't we go down this line here and then come back around. So here's a Dungeons and Dragons Bally. I don't know much about it, but the artwork sure is cool. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, uh, Dungeons and Dragons was huge. Everyone got those books and stuff. I never could. I never knew how to do it though. <laughs> I didn't. But I remember like wanting the, the pewter figures and the dice and stuff. Whirlwind. It's a pretty nice example with LEDs. I used to have that game. I love. I I really love Whirlwind. And seeing it with LEDs makes me wish I had mine still. <laughs> Cause that pops. That looks fantastic. 24. Based on the uh, TV show. It doesn't really get a lot of respect. Uh, Twister is kind of a whirlwind clone. It also has a spinner down there. With, with uh, Bill Paxton on the back glass. God rest his soul. <laughs> He's dead, right? Yes, that one. Yes. <laughs> uh, Harlem Globetrotters. They had that at Fun Spy. I, I seem to remember seeing that game as a kid. I don't know. It's pretty, I don't like it. I, pl I, I played it a few times at Fun Spot. Uh, here's an Elvira and the Party Monsters. There's a lot of, there's, well, there's two Elvira games. Uh, here's High Speed. Now, oh, I talked to Steve Ritchie today, and, and we'll probably show that later in the video. But he did that game there. And I guess the story is he got pulled over in a sports car and then was inspired to do this game. Jackbot. Uh, kind of a sequel to Pinbot with a card theme. Valley Lost World. Another kind of Dungeons and Dragons, kind of Conan the Barbarian esque artwork. Space Station. Williams. Eight Ball Deluxe. There's a few Eight Ball games. Stern Transformers. That's for sale for $4,500. There's a lot of toys in there. I, I don't know if those are all original or what. It looks pretty badass. World Challenge Soccer by Gottlieb. I can't say I know that game. That is for sale for $22.50, probably pretty rare. Next game is The Shadow uh, by Williams. This is a game I've always wanted. I still do want it. I would totally get one of those for the basement. I, th I just feel like it has a lot going on for it. A lot of people don't like the back glass, though. And they'll change it. Just make it look like uh, Trump or something. Yeah. <laughs> Creature from the Black Lagoon. That one has a uh, color DMD in it. That's a cool game. There's a hologram down there, and the ramps are all crazy. Uh, Walking Dead is the next one. Stern. That looks like it has some toys added. I don't know if that Winnebago. Is that like the Winnebago? By the way, Mark came here in a Winnebago. Is that? Yes. Is, did it look like that? Yes. It did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next game is uh, Circus Voltaire, which is a game I always wanted. I thought I did, but the price really turned me off. I just love the neon and the artwork on it. And then they put the display under the back glass above the play field in this weird spot. And that's got a color DMD in it. The next game here is Alvin G and Company. And that was like after, I think they sold Gottlieb or something, and, he's, and, and one of the Gottlieb started an offshoot company. And this is a head-to-head -head football game, which makes complete sense to me. It's kind of like Joust, the Joust pinball. I like how it kind of goes up and then goes back down. Yeah. I think that's cool. All right, let's check out these pins down here. Valley Fireball. This is kind of before my time, honestly, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, Champion Pub, that's a cool boxing themed game. That actually you don't hear a lot of people talk about. I know that when we were in the UK, Harry was going on and on about how much he loved this game. But there's like a punchy bag there that turns around and a boxer guy comes out. The next game here, I don't know what's going on, but this is a Whitewood. Someone did a custom homebrew pinball. There's actually quite a few at this show. And I really do like this that, you know, people are making their own games at home. Hoping that, you know, because uh, TNA, uh, Total Nuclear Annihilation, that we'll talk about in a second, was the same kind of story. Last time I was here, the guy that created it just had a white wood, and now it's in production at Spooky Pinball, so this stuff's happening. I don't know what's going on. Is that, is that like the White House or something? What is that? What? I don't know. Last action hero, did you like that movie? I thought I did. Yeah? Then I saw it again. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on in that game, though. And it's all LED. It, looks, it actually looks good. LEDs really bring back these 90s games, like the look. Because oh, yeah. my whirlwind was so dark and dingy. And, and that one over there was... The thing with the lights are up at the top. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's a... Uh, I think Penn Stadium does that or something. Okay. I don't know if that's what that is, but... Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula is next. Another Williams classic. Machine Bride of Pinbot. There's actually like three Pinbot games, right? There's Jackbot, Pinbot, and Bride of Pinbot. There's actually a mod for that one that... Is it this one or... No, wait. No, not that one. No, that no, that's the original Pinbot. What am I... No, that's the sequel. Oh, it is. That is the sequel. No, that's the sequel. One of them has a DMD in it, and there's like a mod that you can add more rules. Raven, that's one you see on Craigslist all the time. And that's the alt back glass. Yeah. That's not the original back glass. I guess that's the better one to get, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just better color. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so there's a bunch of uh, EM games here. Little, you know, today I spoke and I said when I was a kid, I go to campground and all the EM pinballs were like Indian themed. And here you go. Right, right. <laughs> this is like the kind of game I would have played at a campground. And I would, of course, I of course would play Asteroids instead. But I'd throw a quarter in this. But we're gonna restore that Bronco because it's gonna be a fun challenge. So, Little Chief by Williams, Big Brave by Gottlieb. Here's a really early one here. Wow. Midway's two player target gallery. Kind of like a Tom and Jerry ripoff, maybe? I bet you it is. Williams Skylab. What do you think about a game this old with LEDs in it? If done well, I think it looks good. You do? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about the color ones, though. This, yeah, you gotta be artistic. Yeah, this is kind of inviting, though. So, Eye of the Tiger, I don't know any of these games. Golly, by the Tiger, Sonic Butterfly, don't know it. Is Sonic like an Italian company or something? I seem to think they are. William Scorpion, that's a big wide body, which was a big trend back then. Trident by Stern. What is this one? Gottlieb Vice Force. I'm guessing that's an all translate too. Yeah. That's too good. It's gotta be an 80s game. Yeah. I didn't like this. They did like this weird... Oh, no. Miami Vice. Oh, this oh is... you mean this? Oh, this is Hollywood Heat. This is Hollywood Heat, ah. which is Miami Vice themed. Right. Miami okay. Vice ripoff. Okay, okay. I wonder if someone's reprogramming this to be that game or something. No, I was saying, I didn't like these side rails they used. It, it reminds me of some like cooler my dad had. Like, we, <laughs> like we'd go fishing, and he had like this cooler that had this horrible texture. Maybe there was worms in it, I don't know. All right, Gottlieb King Cool. Now, this Williams Superflight, I think, it, I think there's LEDs. That was done right. That pops, right? You can see the LEDs in there. Yeah. That's very well done. Lord of the Rings, there's a, a Strikes and Spares with the LEDs too. And then Gottlieb's Grand Slam. I kind of like the baseball theme and like the wedge head. You know, you can see the, the head has that kind of wedge shape to it. I, I could get behind a baseball themed EM. Is this a single player game only? I think it is. It's only got one score reel. All right, let's go over here and see what's going on. This 
So there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> so Marco Pinball is here and they brought all the new Sterns. And I gotta tell you, the Iron Maiden has impressed me quite a bit. Visually, I played it though, and I like me and Daniel played it, like the game wouldn't end, it seemed kind of easy, but I'm in love with the artwork. So this is the pro version right here. I think they're doing a really good job with the animations now on the LCDs. It's a lot better than what was like, a, like on Aerosmith. But I was not excited about this game because the theme it, it doesn't do anything for me. But after seeing it, it's pretty darn cool. And the pro is loaded too. And we can look at the LE or premium model over here. So that's like the premium. So it adds kind of plastic toys in there instead of like the plastic stand-ups. But look at that, how cool the animation is on there. It's kind of like a cel-shaded dogfight. I don't know, I just think it's cool. Oh, I like how this lights up right there. Try not to ruin their game. <laughs> I don't know, it's got a lot going for it. Don't you love the gold and yellow colors? The kind of ancient, uh, ancient Egypt theme to it? I, I don't know, it's really working for me. Original artwork. Like I said, I didn't care about the theme, but now that I see it, yeah, I like it. And they also have Ghostbusters and Walking Dead. Star Wars. Aerosmith, all ones we've talked about before. All right, let's go over here. So this uh, booth here has some pretty great pins in it. The new Pirates of the Caribbean. That's the new Jersey Jack game. Dialed in, and then Houdini. So Dennis Nordman, you know, who did Pirates of the Caribbean for Williams, now doing it for Jersey Jack, a sequel. You can see the ship on the back there. The little play field that, that moves left and right, like to the waves. Really impressive, honestly. If I had all the money in the world, I probably would go for a dialed in, honestly. I just like everything about it, like the way it looks, the feel, the colors, the art. It's got that little LCD there, it's like a cell phone. This is an Attack from Mars remake. Again, if I had endless money, I'd get one of those in a heartbeat. I, like, that's one of my favorite 90s games. And the remake is just unbelievably great. Now Houdini, that was here last year. Another just indie kind of pinball game. It's very impressive for such a small company. Pretty sweet. All right, let's go over here. So why don't we walk down this aisle here. Judge Dredd, you know, based on the comic book, not the movie with Stallone, which is probably a wise decision in hindsight. Oh, a, a little more timeless. No Rob Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Who, Revenge from Mars. That has a, a lenticular translite. Wow, that looks cool. Oh man. Can you get a shot of that translite? Can you pick up the lenticular 3D hologram kind of effect? I gotta say, I like that. Oh. That's cool. That is I, oh man, I kind of want to get that now. <laughs> that has an LCD in it. I kind of would like the LED mine. Maybe we'll do that. Here's a getaway. Steve Ritchie with Color DMD, High Speed, the original prequel. The next game here is uh, Skate Ball. And I remember talking to Greg Frares last year. He did the artwork on that. But that's that kind of uh, uh, Stacy Peralta skateboarding era, Tony Alba. I kind of want it just to kind of complete the skateboarding collection, but it's pretty cool. But it's it's one of those older games, a little ahead of my time, a little prior to my time. Marvel Avengers, Stern. So over here, we ACDC. I 
I'm not sure what Star Wars is that. Is that a premium or LE? I, I don't know. I can't keep up with it. This cabinet is kind of cool. This is a, a Splatterhouse themed cabinet that is running, I believe, MAME. I, I believe it's Splatterhouse themed. But it's, it's a stern cabinet that they modified. Alright, so let's go down this last aisle. And I, I think we pretty much did the room. And then there's another room that has even more games that we're going to check out. All right, here's some new pins here. Game of Thrones, Steve Ritchie. That's got a lot going on. Congo, which is a, a game that the theme's not so hot, but I've, I've heard the gameplay is great. I haven't really spent a lot of time on it personally. Here's the stern Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I think I said Williams before. Dennis Norman worked on the stern one, and now it does the Jersey Jack one. And then Lord of the Rings. That was that kind of early-ish Stern era, you know, when that came out. So I'm not quite the story of this. Uh, I, I, I don't quite understand the story about this. But Kingpin was a game that Capcom never released. And it looks like someone's trying to make it still. And there's an LCD down there. I played the game once. I'm not sure if it's worth the effort. Seems a little, a little light. <laughs> I mean, would you spend like six, seven, eight grand on that or buy? I don't think I would. Uh, Terminator 2 Judgment. Jay, Jay, and, Jay and I actually just bought one of those and it's at the hangar. Another getaway. Uh, Stern Spider Man. The Hobbit by Jersey Jack. Here's a fan made Zelda game that was actually at the show last year. So someone's been trying to finish this game for the last few years. And they're re-theming some kind of a Gottlieb game. I'm not sure, honestly, what that game is. This one is kind of funny. The Foo Fighters. This is a reskinned and rethemed Rolling Stone game. Whoa. Yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. But it used to be a Rolling Stone. And they changed the music and stuff. I don't know how they did it, but it's cool. All right. Bliss is Showtime cabinet. Here's one of those raw thrills, gigantic, color-changing LED screen games. This is Space Invaders Frenzy. This one you're shooting Space Invaders. It's pretty cool. Now over here, so there's two like pinball machines at this show that I would like to own. One is dialed in. The other is this one right here. Total Annihilation. And it just it just works for me and it's a single level play field and the game is brutally hard the music is really cool it's fast all the shots are challenging but fair and this is a spooky pinball product I, I just I like everything about it absolutely I like how it has the LCD display and then also the segmented like LED display or, L or whatever you want to call it, ports or whatever. Oh, LCD. Yeah, yeah. So it's got like the old school displays with the LCD. I like that. I like the art. I they killed it. That's like a six thousand dollar pin though. That I would do. You do that? Yeah, why not? Why not? Oh what? no, this one yes I would do. You would do this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you spend time with it, it's, it's fun, right? And the way the balls lock is genius, too. It's like these drop targets, and you hit the drop target ahead of it, and, it, and then as soon as you do the one behind it, fires up and traps the ball in between drop targets, and then you release them all at once. Uh, it's, just, it's just a very, very clever design. All right, let's go down here. So we've got some guy here selling kind of multi cades Actually, been busy like the whole show. And then over here, Data East Robocop, heavily LED. This is kind of cool. This Williams Pop Shot, a uh, Hot Shot basketball game. I would totally put that in the hangar. <laughs> That's cool, right? I don't think I've ever seen that. I'd rethink this to Maverick or Goose. Yes. <laughs> Goose wings. Goose wings? Yeah. So it's kind of a Top Gun-ish. Mousing around. That's kind of a cool game. 
God Leaves Torch, I don't know that at all. It looks like some kind of Olympic themed game. WrestleMania. Golly Pro Football. Eight Ball Champ. And then there's the X Men. And then here's some kind of like virtual pins. X Men, and then this one's doing a Doom themed table. Empire Strikes Back. Skyrim. Wow. That's pretty funny. I kind of like that they're doing these themes. You know, these are PC and video games, you know. Here's a Tesla themed. Like, Tesla's a great subject matter for a pinball, right? I don't know, it's kind of cool. I don't know if I'd ever make one, but it's pretty cool. All right, Mark, so that's the main room. Why don't we go check out the other room? I know, yeah. right? <laughs> we're just over here, let's go. Alright, so we're over here. Uh, they have kind of like a, a cocktail row right here. And every time I go to the bathroom, which is way too many times, uh, this tapper is going like constantly. I like the overlay, yeah, see? <laughs> Asteroids, Arkanoid. This one has a 60 and 1 in it, it looks like. Missile Command, Asteroids. Is that Space Invaders? I think it is. And then this one's pretty rare, the Foo Fight. And here's another Merit Phrase Craze. This is kind of like pre-Mega Touch, right? So... I, I might have played that, I don't remember. And then again, they have kind of, you know, board gamey type stuff here. We kind of cut through here. Big Funko Pop vendor. Board games. People playing tabletop games quite a bit here, actually. Signs, players wanted, so you can c come here and pick up a game of whatever. So, all right, let's go to this room over here. So this is this is a, a, a room that wasn't here last year, so the, the place is, uh, the show's a lot bigger, and there's a lot of 80s games in here, including consoles. And this room's kind of fun, actually. This is where I bought my, uh, my cruising, <laughs> cruising USA Nintendo 64 cart. Um, so you come in here, they have a bunch of CRT TVs, you know, 2600 playing Pitfall and Burger Time over there, NES, and television. That's right, the Burger Time on a television, I remember, was really good. But really, would you want to play that now? There's so many other better options. Like, right, play the real thing. Boot up MAME or just go over there. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pick, pickaxe, Pete, what is, what is that game? I don't even know what that game is. Uh, that's right, remember the handle on the cartridge? That's crazy. But, and remember like these really crappy keyboards like this? That's what I had. My parents made me suffer with this. But there's not even like a lip on it. Like on the Atari 400, if I remember right, is there a lip on these? Yeah, you can feel like... Right? Some kind of a texture? Blind, it's still tight. And then these controllers here? Can we try this game? So I don't even know how to start it. Let's see. Oh my god. What what game is this? Happen. Hey, I'm turning this off. Oh yeah, this the snow. Ah. So here's the cartridge. Yeah, this is Pickaxe Pete. I love the handle though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, select game. Is this a mult? Wait, wait, why does it no, say that? This, that's what it said when you turned it. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh, like. I'm, oh, wait. No, it's, it should have said Odyssey too, right? Why does it say select game? All right. What is the. Bu oh, my. Is this like Donkey Kong? I don't feel like I'm controlling this. Am I trying to get to the... I don't... I remember having a friend that had one of these systems, but... I, didn't, I don't have a lot of experience. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, uh, it was terrible. In Television 2... This game was cool, this Astro Smash game. I, di I was not a fan of this system, though. I thought these controllers were just garbage. But I remember having a friend whose dad was kind of cool, and he, he had the television, and we'd go over there and play like the baseball and football games. It, they definitely had better sports games than the 2600, but I just thought these controllers were garbage. Because I had the, um, my first computer was a Mattel Aquarius. Do you remember that? No. 
And it was basically an Intellivision computer. Oh, and it had those paddles. And I would try to play a game called uh, Snaf oh, Utopia. Oh, what is this? Wait, what system is this? Gemini video game system? It's got to be repro type. No. I know it is. So this thing plays 2600. Well, didn't Coleco have an add-on? You could play 2600 games on it? Right, but you had to hook it into the Coleco. Right, so did they just go for it and make their own 2600 clone? I do love the snow. Because these things are all hooked up through the RF, aren't they? It's not composite, right? These joysticks are kind of cool with the paddle built in. All right, how do we, how do we start the game here? Nothing's happening. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's kind of fun, actually. There's, there's a Wii U kiosk. You think, like, in 20 years, this will be, like, the... Oh, I, I'm collecting Splatoon. This will be, like, the ColecoVision kiosk. That'd be fun to have in my basement. I love the Wii U, honestly. I thought the Wii U was great. So let's go over here. This is kind of fun. So... <laughs> Look at that thing, man. I'm trying to get to see what's it called? Video pinball? Oh, that's video. That's Atari. cool. That's Atari. Wow, I I've heard of that. I don't remember it. That's cool. So that's just like a dedicated console to play one game only. <laughs> Here's a Turbo Graphics 16. I always thought this was a cool system. Bonk's Adventure obviously is like the big one of the big games for it. So the controller, like those are pretty good graphics, kind of SNES-ish. I think the reputation was that this was better looking than the NES, right? Was it? Do you remember? I was in college. I don't. I don't have a lot of friends that had this, so I don't really have a lot of personal experience back in the day. But I remember it being around. Super Nintendo, obviously. Sega Genesis. You have a Get out. Yeah, yeah, I do, thank you. John's Arcade. <laughs> John's Arcade. You want to be in the video? <laughs> What's your name? Devon. Devon. What's your favorite game here? Um, it probably will be like, kind of the old games like Mario and stuff like that. Mar like which Mario? Like which, for Super Nintendo, NES, which one? Uh, it probably be from my the, the Nintendo Switch from Mario Kart. Oh, Mario Kart. Yeah. The Switch one is your favorite. Yeah. And do you like these old games? I mean, yeah, especially the Atari. I, you I, like I, this? Yeah. You you do not. No one likes this. <laughs> this is your favorite. <laughs> not not my favorite, but I do like it. You do. I mean, do you collect these old games? No. You don't. No. Does this seem like old people stuff? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Do you guys like this stuff? Is this old people stuff or what? It's okay. It's okay? <laughs> like, wh what games are you playing in here besides that? I've, I've played uh, over there. Like, yesterday they had uh, Super Mario World. Yeah? On, the, on a Super Nintendo? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> All right, guys. What is it? Oh, my YouTube channel is called John's Arcade. John's Arcade? Yeah. Okay. You're in the video. What's your name? My name's Ben. My name's Adam. Adam. All right, guys. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's go over here. Look at this Genesis. God, there's... So they were just kind of making things smaller, right, at the end? Is that what happened? I, I don't... I've never seen I'm that. I'm sure they could make it as small as the cartridge now if they want. Yeah, they could, right? I... I, I hated the Genesis, and I know I'm, I'm alone. I was such a Nintendo fanboy, I couldn't even acknowledge it existed. <laughs> I'd go to Kmart, and they'd have like the, uh, the, the this, you know, this setup on the counter, you know, and you could play like Altered Beast or whatever, and I'm like, no. I love the original Xbox, though. So this is the Duke controller, which was kind of, became kind of a joke, and then they came out with the smaller one after, but they just released this for the Xbox One. Right. And the new one has, uh, this is like a little LED type display that does an animation of the Xbox booting up. But this controller is obnoxiously large here. 
look at. <laughs> did you have an original Xbox? I did. I loved it. It was so good. <laughs> oh, the Atari Jaguar. Yeah, I remember seeing this thing at, uh, there's a store called Venture in Chicago. I remember kind of wanting it. It's the controller is horrible though. The graphics are pretty darn good. It's a cool system. The Tenno 64, you know, that's my favorite system at the end. GameCube Smash Brothers. They got the Wii here. I guess that's kind of retro now. What? <laughs> playing Wii Bowling. So, so they're playing some Halo back there. Cuphead on the Xbox One. Halo. That's pretty cool. They got Halo going. Look at that old PC back there. Is that running King of Fighters? What is that? So more vendors, vendors here. This soccer game is pretty cool. I like the fake grass in there. These games are actually kind of expensive. I don't know if you ever seen that game before. I played it last night. It's great. There was one at an auction that I was at, and it went for way more than I ever thought it would go for. I thought it was kind of cheesy with the carpeting and with the <laughs> in there. So people, vendors selling uh, used games. Bunch of CRT set up here. NES. I'm surprised they got RBI baseball. Smash Brothers tournament. That's pretty cool. So over here is a bunch of games. Uh, Mikey, which is a pretty rare, rare, rare game right there. The Konami cabinet. That's very rare. I played that game in MAME. I don't remember what you do in it, but there's clearly some kind of school things going on. <laughs> it's it's Pac-Man, but you're a child. It's Pac-Man, but you're a child? Yes. Are you trying to like hook up with girls or something? What's I going have, on? I have no Why? idea. <laughs> you can headbutt the screen. Oh, wait. Oh, oh wait. really? Okay, here we go. Here's wait, did she, is she under the desk? What happened? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Alright, I think I, I think I... You think you know what's going on? I might start to get it. Nice. There we go. Oh, you're I think there's some you, kind of love thing going on. Yeah, you have to... But then... Oh uh, but you're smacking the girl in the f with your butt? I, yeah. I don't get it. Yes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so I think you're supposed to do it while the teacher's at the chalkboard, right? And then you go back. But then you head zap the teacher. You hit him in his nuts with your head. Ah, but Weird game. Just right. it's a very game. <laughs> so this next game here, Firescape. Uh, this is a pretty cool game, really. It kind of reminds me. I, I don't know if I played this, but there's a ball, right, that rolls around in here. Right. And this one's out of order. You can see the balls right there. It reminds me kind of like ice cold beer, not in gameplay, but just kind of the idea of this ball, kinetic energy thing, whatever. But I think it's a cool cabinet. I know that Dave from Buffalo had found a bunch of those, right? Maybe. Oh, is that known? I don't know. <laughs> but you're moving this thing right here, so I, you can see kind of what happens with the ball. I don't know, it seems like a weird game from a weird company. Yeah, they have one at Green Cruise as well. Oh, they do? Oh, yeah. So, Circus Charlie, always loved that game. Nice. Galaga, uh, Mystic Marathon, that's that's pretty rare. Williams game. Defender. Now that's a Williams Wood Blaster. That's mega rare. I don't know if that's original or what, or if there's a J-Rock in there. But if that's an original, I don't think it is though. The cabinet's too perfect. Yeah, I, I think that's a repro. I don't know though. When we were in Chicago, uh, we visited Joe Majera and he had an original one. This has laminate on it. I bet you they're, this is, this is badass. I don't know the story of this one. Here's a Williams multi-game. Well, it's actually a 19-1. Moop Mo Troll, Robotron, Stargate. Satan's Hollow, Domino Man, which is awesome. 1943, out in a Sega cabinet. It's a little tight in here. Sammy Trophy Hunting, Tempest, Outrun, Mr. Dew. 
That's kind of a neat cabinet. I don't know what's going on with that. I kind of want a Mr. Do, just because it's a fun game. Do you like it? Yeah. That cabinet kind of... It almost works. Is this like some kind of poker machine or something? It almost looks kind of like legit. This is $200. There you go. So you guys can come here and come home with a game for $200. Century Phoenix, Kung Fu Master. That looks like that. the blaster cabinet. <laughs> is it the same? Or is that a Stargate? What, what, I don't know what's going on. What? <laughs> I'm not the best at the Williams profiles. They're all kind of close, right? There's the ice cold beer. So this is kind of like Nintendo Row here. So there's a wide body Mario, Popeye, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. Play Choice 10 in a junior cabinet. Play Choice 10 upright in kind of the dual dual monitor punch out configuration then a punch out those toppers are cool when i had my play choice i was collecting those it's kind of fun little that's the whole thing you got it diversion centipede pole position asteroids some more pins here star wars i feel like this that's like the third stern meteor we've seen value medusa value paragon f14 which is a game that Jay and I just bought, actually, and then Swords of Fury. And then here's some cabarets. I totally dig this. This Ladybug, I don't know what, what's going on with this either, but I like it. Ladybug's actually a pretty good game. There's Pac Cabaret, Pac-Man, and then Galaga. And then there's some more pins here. Taxi, Comet, Cyclone, Blackout, Strange Science, Time Warp. Fireball and Scorpion. So that's kind of the whole show. Oh, Mark's over there. <laughs> so I, I think we've seen. I mean, there's other rooms here. Do you want to see if we can see other stuff? Yeah, I heard there's some other things. All right, let's go. Let's go see what else we can find. I kind of did, but this one was broken too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we thought we were gonna come over here and show you guys trains, G-scale trains, right? Because this, this place has like multiple conventions going on and there's like a judo competition that's gone. And apparently the G-scale train convention is gone too. It's just an empty room now. <laughs> and by the way, are G-scale gigantic trains or tiny? What, what are they? You don't, you don't know? I, I, I gotta Google it. <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for Southern Fried Game Room Expo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a great show. You know, we just went into two of the big main kind of video game and, and pinball rooms, but there's other stuff happening here, like there's wrestling and rock band tournaments and stuff. It's a very cool show. So anyway, that's gonna do it. Why don't we go back to the basement? We'll do some viewer mail. So, all right, guys, let's go back down to the basement. There you have it. That was the 2018 Southern Fried Gaming Expo Show Tour. What'd you think, huh? I tell you, I love going to that show. You know, the vibe is very relaxed and chilled. You know, I just like the show and the people, especially. And of course, you know, they have a decent selection of arcade games and pinball machines. 
retro consoles. You know, they, they had like a Smash Brothers tournament going on. Board games, you know, stuff for sale. A little bit of something for everybody. So if you're ever in the Atlanta area, definitely make an effort to go to this show in June. And of course, I want to thank everybody I met at the show. Everybody is so cool. Of course, I want to thank Preston uh, from the Game Room Junkie podcast. He's the one that puts this show on. He's the one that brings me down there. So Preston, thank you. Of course, I want to thank Mike Martin, who shoved me back and forth from the airport. And of course, I love hanging out with everybody, especially my friend Daniel and even Casey. So anyway, that was the show. It was good. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on here. I want to talk about this. So Scott Swayze, okay? Now, if you guys remember, we did a video like last winter. We went to my friend Jay's Arcade in Providence, Rhode Island called Free Play, okay? And Scott was there. Like, he, Scott lives like in California, but he, he flies out to the East Coast every now and then. But anyway, we were at the Free Play uh, in Rhode Island, and he brought one of the, his prototype multi-vector FPGA boards, and we checked it out, okay? Now, Scott has since sent me like a production board, and I thought we'd open this up and look at it together, because I haven't even looked at it yet, but let's, let's just take a look here. So this is a, a FPGA, okay? multi-vector board it's kind of like a platform and and right now it plays major havoc and tempest and it, it, it on either uh, vertical or horizontal monitors so if you have a tempest you can play major havoc on it if you have a major havoc you can play tempest on it and he also has omega race on here right now and i guess over time he's gonna be adding more games to this platform and he's on clove his username is scott451 and i get, i think he's taking pre-order on this right now now it's not cheap though it's like 700 dollars, right that's that's pretty pricey but you know what you could do a lot of stuff with it. And let's take a look here. So this is the platform right here. And this is an adapter that he made that allows you to plug this into a Tempest, okay? So it says here, Tempest FPGA interface. Now I'm not sure, I, I think this should plug right into my uh, Tempest Major Havoc over there because I think there's an adapter that converts Tempest to Major Havoc. I think this will just plug right into that adapter. But if I plug this in there, we'll be able to play again, you know, Major Havoc, which I have already, uh, Tempest, and then Omega Race. Now I'm wondering how Omega Race and Tempest will work with the roller because I don't have a spinner anymore. But I think we'll do a video on this. I don't know when, but I just, I just wanted to make you guys aware of this board because uh, he's taking pre orders now. And again, he's on Clov. His handle is Scott451, S-C-O-T-T-451. But I, I think it's so cool that these FPGA boards are making these games last forever. I actually talked to Adam over the weekend, and he's really close on that pole position. I think he's going to sell a ton of those. <laughs> so I can't wait to get that board, especially because I want pole position 2 down here. Because uh, I have a pole position 2 cabinet, but it's at the hangar. I'd love to play pole position 2 down here because I actually find it kind of better than 1. And right now I just have 1 on the dedicated cabinet. But it'd be cool to switch in between the games. So anyway, very cool this FPGA stuff. I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of this as time goes on. All right, let's do some viewer mail. Uh, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you got to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. Could be a question, could be a comment, could be anything. Just send it to john, J-O-H-N, at john johnsarcade.com. Uh, let's see, the first one's from Michael. Uh, I swear this is the last question for a while, and I hope you uh, thought about a quick Toolbox Essentials video. Yeah, uh, people have been asking me to do like a, a Essentials video, uh, like what's in my toolbox. I I'll do that. My toolbox right now is a, a big mess, though. <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, what is the stuff I I've seen you spray on PCB chips and all over? Hope, hope all is well. So the stuff that I spray like on connectors and stuff and pins, uh, it's called Deoxit. And uh, it comes in a spray, it also comes in a liquid. This is actually the liquid version of it, okay? I actually just used this liquid version on my Nintendo 64. Because uh, I bought a, a Diddy Kong racing cartridge that didn't work. I bought it on eBay for like $5. I put it in my Nintendo 64 and it didn't work. And I took some of this and I, I cleaned the connectors on the cartridge and then just kind of reset it a few times in the Nintendo 64. So this stuff works really well uh, on the Neo Geo slots. It works good on edge connectors if you want to clean them. Um, it, it, it's not like contact cleaner, which is like flammable. I, I feel this stuff is pretty safe if you're using it like on DC applications and stuff. Um, I don't know about, I wouldn't use this on AC stuff. Uh, but I've had really good luck with this stuff. I don't know if there's any downsides. Actually, are there downsides to this stuff? But I, I do use this quite a bit on connectors and stuff, and even sockets, you know, to clean sockets and, and legs on uh, chips. And I, I've had a lot of good luck with it, especially with my Neo Geo. Like, I had cartridges that wouldn't even work in Neo Geo, or the cart would work, but there'd be no sound. And I'd spray deoxid in the, in the, uh, in the socket and then just kind of reseat the cartridge a few times. This stuff works great. And the liquid's pretty cool, too. They make a spray in a liquid. All right, let's move on. 
Uh, this next one here, and by the way, my light bulb burnt out right here, and I don't know what kind of bulb to get. <laughs> I, I thought it was one of these halogen guys, but apparently this does not work. So I don't have an overhead light right now, and actually my big, like, camera light broke on the trip to Atlanta, so the lighting right now might be a little weird. Uh, different than what we're used to, but I gotta figure out what kind of bulb goes in this thing up here. I thought it was this halogen I bought at Home Depot. It won't, doesn't work. Anyway, um, no from Scott Alley. So this, he sent this through my Facebook page, which I don't really monitor or check. If you want to get a hold of me, you're better off e emailing me at john at johnsarcade.com. But he says, uh, I'm looking for a set of ROMs for my crazy climber PCB and thought of you and the video of you chasing down on one. Would it be possible to buy a new set of ROMs? So I, I, I get asked this quite a bit. You know, I'm actually not really set up to burn ROMs all the time. Um, and actually, my ROM burning computer blew up. So it doesn't even work anymore. I did buy a, a, a Panasonic Toughbook to replace it. And then I and then I had a USB key that I was using to boot into DOS, and I and then that key was sticking on the laptop, and it was stepped on, and it snapped off. So I'm not set up to, to make ROMs and ship them out, but Stephen at HobbyRoms.com is. So if you guys need ROMs burned, just go to go to HobbyRoms.com, and actually that's who I used to use before I got my own burner. Like the first time I, when I got Balloon Fight working, I got the ROMs. He burnt all the ROMs for me. So HobbyRoms.com. All right, here's one. Now, this is a question I get a lot, and I don't know the answer to this really because I haven't talked to him in a while, but I know that he had a problem. So he says, is everything okay? So the, the subject line is Ian Kellogg. Now, Ian and I were doing John's Arcade brand of cap kits, and, he, and Ian is an electrical engineer. He, he really put together the best cap kits ever, the end. We had the best cap kits. But then Ian had an unfortunate event. Uh, his house burnt down. <laughs> and he's been kind of out of commission in limbo since. And as a result, his business kind of just stopped. And he tried doing some of it from an apartment. But I haven't talked to him in a couple months. But I I'll tell you right now, I, I don't know if he's coming back, but just understand he had a bit of a tragedy in his life. So we got to cut the guy some slack here, you know, because because his house burnt down. He's been living like in an apartment and stuff. So uh, so we got to cut him some slack. And I don't know he'll, it, when he'll be back on his feet or even if he's going to come back doing it. I don't know. But I can tell you that's what happened. OK, and, and I'll, maybe I'll ask him and we'll follow up in the next video. But I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, this one's from Winfield Hall Baker. Um, Let's see, uh, so he's emailed me quite a bit and wants to know how come I'm not responding. <laughs> I do get a lot of viewer mail, okay? I try, obviously I read at least three on every episode, okay? I get more than that though. I get more viewer mail than we can read on the show. And maybe someday I'll do a viewer mail segment and I'll, I'll print them all out and I'll read like 30 of them. But typically I like to do three, three every show. So if I don't read it, it doesn't mean anything. It just means I, I had too much, you know? And I do pick them at random, really. Um, so he goes on, you know, wanting to know why I haven't read the email. Um, and he has a question. Okay, let's see. He wants to know if I'd make a video on how to make a bar top arcade or a regular size arcade with, with that already wired and put together or, or get a Pandora's box. Uh, there is a hero box on eBay and it has over 2,000 games. This would make everything easier and would not uh, be like a Miss Pac-Man with a Jamma board adapter. This would be neater and cleaner. And I know you have extra CRTs and CRTs TVs uh, for five to twenty bucks. You could make the video uh, with many people would like, and uh, it'd be something for you to build for yourself, and not a cabinet bought that the factory made and you bought over thirty years ago. Uh, build it out of solid oak or hardwood or plywood. Uh, as long as the hardwood. Uh, anyway, Winfield, thanks. <laughs> so, so Winfield wants me to make a, a from scratch arcade game, and I'll tell you, I've thought about that a lot over the years. Um, so it's, it's more of a function of time at this point because I actually would like to do something like this. I think it'd be cool to build a little uh, bar top arcade game with a little tiny CRT running like a Raspberry Pi. And, and I, I, what I would love to do is build that, do a series on it and give it away and give it to one of you guys. Like that would be cool. Like I want to do something like that. So I have to think about this. I have to carve out some time. I do think it'd be fun to build something from scratch. I knew one of the, my viewers built a from scratch Crazy Kong. Like Cabaret, oh my god, like I want that bad. Like, I want a Crazy Kong game like really bad. I would love to build a little Crazy Kong Cabaret. So I don't know, I, I, I foresee us doing something scratch built in the future, but right now it's more a function of time. Um, all right, let's see. 
Let's see. Hey, John, I've been digging deeper into collecting thanks to all I've learned from your videos. And I've made a small leap to becoming an operator. You know, this not having this light above me is making it very hard for me to read this stuff. It's nothing like the hangar, uh, but I uh, have a small space in a large event hall, which gets rented out every weekend for all sorts of events. Uh, sweet 16 parties, bar mitzvahs, weddings. I maintain the games in a game room and get a cut of the rental proceeds. Everything is on free play. The kids sure are hard on the games. I've had many joysticks uh, uh, bolts fall off and the entire joystick come loose. Um, I've had control panels ripped off because the latches don't hold well. Man, I haven't had any of this kind of stuff. Um, the kids tug hard. Uh, uh, the best games are the ones with only buttons. Asteroids or Phoenix. I'm wondering if you could speak of issues you run into at the hangar from regular usage and what you do solve how do you what do you do to solve them? Um, do you triple nut all your joysticks and the panels use Loctite? You could do your control panels or latches come loose? Thanks, Adam. So okay, we I, I have we have, Jay and I have definitely had joysticks come loose on arcade games. Uh, it happened once actually uh, on uh, uh, su versus Super Mario. Uh, the four little carriage bolts and the nuts fell off, and the joystick just fell inside the game. So I had to fix that. Um, on uh, on uh, Konami X Men, same thing. Carriage bolt came loose, and and then they, and the joystick just fell in. So that's happened to me. Um, the thing that I see the most that drives me insane is little kids playing pinball and they don't know how to play pinball and they go up to the, the switch like this. So they're just basically just hitting the flippers non-stop on my $6,000 Ghostbusters, right? And they're just, the entire game, this is all they're doing. And a lot of times, there'll be two kids, right? And they'll, they'll, they'll one kid will be on the left and one's on the right and they put the money in and they just go like this, non-stop, both of them at the same time. <laughs> And, and the thing is, I'll be there, and I don't know what to do. I, I bite my tongue. I just, I just, I just walk away. I let it happen. <laughs> what would you do? Like they just like, just, it, it drives me batty. So that is the worst thing. Another thing that drives me insane though is the coin mech jams, which you don't have because you have a free play system here. I, I, the, the coin jams drive me insane. I cannot tell you how many Canadian quarters, pennies, nickels, dimes. Uh, a dollar, uh, you know, Susan B. Anthony dollars are jammed in these games. That's the thing that drives me the nuts. Is that you know, I, I, kids like just pick up pick, anything that's in their pocket. They put in the coin slots. I even found uh, cardboard quarters. Like someone cut out cardboard and tried putting them in the, in multiple games. That was that was a nuance. So, anyway, guys, that's it. We're done. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, uh, you know, again, if you guys want to send a viewer mail, send it to john at johnsarcade.com. Uh, if you guys want to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. That is a weekly podcast that I've been doing for about 14 years. So go to videogameoutsiders.com. You guys can install the Video Game Outsiders app from the iOS or, or Google Play Store. Podcast is completely free. There are bonus episodes every, po uh, every week, though that require a, a, a subscription for two bucks a month. That's it, you know. For two bucks a month, you get like 15 extra podcasts right now. And actually, I interviewed Steve Ritchie uh, at Southern Fried Game Room Expo. That interview is on the podcast app, in, but, but it's for subscribers. So if you guys are interested, go check it out at videogameoutsiders.com or Google Play and iTunes. And other than that, that's it. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for subscribing, liking, all that stuff. And yes, next video, I think we're going to get to that Mortal Kombat. And then I also want to play Donkey Kong on the Switch. You know, you know the arcade version is on the Switch now. And I want to do that. So we'll figure out something to do with that. So anyway, that's it, guys. I'll see you very soon. Later, and bye.